Howdy, SEO Moz fans, and welcome to this edition of Whiteboard Friday. This week, I wanted to talk a little bit about content strategy, specifically as it relates to content arms races. I've been noticing that many folks in our community and the marketing community overall have said, boy, it's, it's not just me anymore who's investing in content, trying to share that content in, through search and through social networks. It's all my competitors, too. So we're almost getting into this like content arms race type of environment, which is, is tough. And I recognize that. I also recognize that I do a terrible job drawing a guy with a knife and another guy with what looks like a shower head. They both, they both have guns and shower heads. I don't know why. But they're in an arms race right, for content because content marketing is becoming so popular. And because of that, you need to take extra steps to go above and beyond what your competitors to do in order to win in this space. So first thing I'm recommending is choose some create, creative content formats. A lot of folks, when they get into content marketing, they think, oh, we're gonna have a blog, maybe we're gonna have a, a, a forum, maybe we're gonna have uh, some articles and some white papers we put out. And those are fine, but you should think beyond that, right? So it, in the SaaS world, in the, the enterprise world, a lot of people extend immediately into webinars. Some people get into slideshows. I would also urge you to think about video, right? Vi I mean, Whiteboard Friday itself, a very effective content marketing tool. I think we started Whiteboard Friday long before we knew what content marketing really was uh, or content strategy, but conversations, right? So you can see a lot of people using conversations, uh, Q&A types of formats, forums, uh, using their communities to build conversations, even the blog comments becoming conversations. Comics, comics have been, have been really huge on the web. You can see people like uh, XKCD having a ton of success and lots of folks in the uh, marketing world and in the B2B world even trying to leverage some comical stuff. Uh, graphics, certainly if you can produce high quality graphics, photos, imagery, uh, whatever you're capturing, graphs and charts, if you can assemble data, even if you don't create the data yourself or you're not responsible for the data, if you build the charts yourself, wow, you, you can really win with that. Uh, interactive tools. These ones are extremely hard to replicate. If you are the source, the resource in your industry for that particular type of tool, man, no, no one's going to take you. you you've got to win. Next step, share what others are unwilling or unable to share. And, and this can be highly valuable. So when I say unwilling, what I'm really talking about is some people aren't willing to go to the, the length of transparency to share data from their own campaigns or data from their networks, or they don't have a large enough community to be able to survey, or they don't have a network where they can reach out to folks who have that type of information or can make those kinds of contributions. Maybe they don't have the financial resources to say, uh, you know, bring in, uh, expertise or to commission a public study or whatever it is that you have an advantage on. That could be your size, your nimbleness, uh, your community, your uh, creativity. Do those things that your competitors cannot or will not do. And that includes you know, data from your contacts, but also investing beyond what is reasonable. So uh, I'll, I like to think of this as the uh, quality sort of beats quantity approach. Now, this is true for two things. Uh, the first one I'd say is that it's not always the case that, that quality wins out, but if you do these couple of things right, it, it can. Number one is being able to create resources that no one can do a better job of. And what's great about that is it means you can actually steal ideas from your competitors, from the rest of the marketplace, from the media, reproduce them yourselves in a better way, right? Do, a, do an even better job. Oh, we had a there was this study and we decided to replicate the results and we have even more, uh, an even larger audience for it and so we've got even more data. Uh, we asked a few questions that we're really missing in the first one. We used an even better method, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and it means, and, and you should go for consistency here. So consistency and quantity are often tied together in people's minds. This is not actually the case. Just because you're consistent doesn't necessarily mean that you have to produce a huge volume two times a month in terms of a great piece of content, even once a month, can work out just fine. Think of one of our, our favorite content marketing examples in the, uh, in the inbound marketing world has been for the last few years, OK Trends, the OK Cupid blog. And they were literally producing sometimes a blog post only once every two or three months, but it was fairly consistent. Now it's, now it's dropped off after the acquisition, but still very exciting stuff. Uh, I would urge you, if you haven't already, to think about how you can build a community, a community for 
uh, marketing content is invaluable because it means that the amplification of your message and of the content that you share is so much broader than what you could get otherwise. If you don't have a community, your competitors almost certainly can win by building up one. And if you don't have one, there's a few things you can do to leverage them. Number one, bring in people who have communities of their own and ask them for contributions. Sometimes you may need to pay them, sometimes you can offer them exposure, an audience, something else, right? A, a high quality speaker, a great resource that you bring into your site. Sometimes you can even go as far as to say, hey, you know what, we're, uh, we're the New York Times and we really love these Freakonomics guys and we'd like them to blog for us. And there you go. Now, now the Freakonomics blog exists on, on, on the New York Times itself. Same thing with uh, 538, the popular political science blog from Nate Silver, right? Uh, my, my last recommendation here, in terms of investing in, in places where your competitors aren't, is to hit the long tail. So, and by long tail, what I mean is, if there's, if there's a direct funnel, if, if you think about consumers coming to your site and content marketing sort of being at the top of that funnel, it's gonna bring people in who are potentially interested in your product. You can think about that funnel as going, getting deeper and deeper, and a lot of folks focus on the deeper parts of the funnel. That's where a lot of content marketing happens because they want people in the buying cycle, down, engage in the buying cycle. What I'd urge you to do, think about it even higher up. Those, those long tail searches that people are performing, the videos and content and interactive tools and stuff that they are using long before they're even interested, potentially interested in your product. And then you can reach people and brand them and have content marketing success where your competitors aren't even trying to compete with you. They're not even investing. All right, everyone, hope you've enjoyed this edition of Whiteboard Friday, and we'll see you again next week. Take care.